If you deal with photos or videos in any capacity, you've probably encountered various external SSDs like the Samsung T5s or T7s, SanDisk Extremes, or maybe just regular old hard disk drives. But what if I told you you could get an external drive that's customizable, often much faster for a cheaper price? And I'm talking about NVMe drives. Typically, these types of drives are installed directly inside a computer. But if you don't want the hassle of opening up your PC and mucking around, or if you've got a Mac, like me and that's not even an option then you can use an enclosure to turn them into portable external drives these housings are typically pretty cheap like you can often get them for less than 30 us dollars and then once you've got an enclosure you can go on the hunt for a great deal on an nvme drive and i've seen some nvme drives for literally half the price of equivalent sized pre-built ssd drives so today i want to talk a bit about how these enclosures work the types of speed differences you can expect between the different types of drives and a big mistake to avoid to make sure you buy the right NVMe drive so you're not disappointed with your speeds and waste your money. So once you have an NVMe drive and an enclosure, they're typically super easy to set up. I have the Uni Accessories Infinite Enclosure and I'll leave links in the description to all the different items I talk about in the video. But I think this one looks great and it supports transfer speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. And take note of that term gigabits because I'll talk a bit more about that later. And then to go inside this enclosure, I got a Samsung 990 Pro, which to be honest is overkill for this enclosure. And you definitely won't need a drive this expensive to get equivalent speeds. But installing your drive into your enclosure is super easy. All you have to do is literally just pop open the enclosure. From there, it's just a matter of slotting the NVMe drive into the correct position. And then this Uni Accessories enclosure has a thermal pad, which you then place on top of the drive. And this just helps to dissipate heat because these NVMe drives do heat up quite a lot. Then literally all you do is just close the drive back up plug it into your computer and format it and that's it you're ready to go so what kind of speeds can you actually really expect from an nvme drive in an external enclosure compared to a regular ssd or a hard disk drive now to start off with i'll talk a bit about my hard disk drive which i just use to back up all my old projects so it's a four terabyte seagate drive and this gets me speeds of about 70 to 80 megabytes per second read and write speeds and this is about normal for a hard disk drive and the reason hard disk drives are so much slower is because they've got actual physical disks spinning inside the enclosure and so there's actual physical limitations to how fast data can be written and read on these types of drives which is why they're often a lot cheaper as well so next i have a one terabyte seagate ssd drive this is kind of the equivalent of like a samsung t5 and this will get me speeds of 300 to 350 megabytes per second read and write speed which is heaps faster than a hard disk drive so for me as a content creator and video editor i've been editing my YouTube projects off this SSD for probably close to two years now because moving 4k files around and editing and transferring things just really is not feasible on the slower hard disk drive like if i was editing off that drive it would be super slow and laggy in my editing software and to transfer files would just take ages and the reason ssds are so much faster is because ssd stands for solid state disk so they're solid they're just like basically like a computer chip so there's no moving parts which means the data transfer can be a lot more efficient now finally let's talk about the actual nvme drive so on this drive with this enclosure i can get speeds of about 980 megabytes megabytes per second write speeds and 900 megabytes per second read speeds, which is like three times as fast as my SSD. And I can try and explain to you why <laughs> NVMe drives are so much faster, but I don't really understand it myself. All I know is that the infrastructure of the way the, the chips are built is better than regular SSD somehow. So that's why they're faster. But that is the cool thing about these drives. You can literally get a equivalent sized NVMe drive for significantly cheaper than equivalent SSDs, especially if you're looking out for deals and sales and that type of thing. And the speeds will be at least equivalent, if not faster. Some of the newer SSDs do also get the same sorts of speeds, like 900 to 1000 megabytes per second. But if you can get it cheaper and it's customizable, so in the future, if you wanna upgrade it or change your storage, you can do that. I think it's a pretty good option for content creators or people who work with video or photo on a regular basis. Now, like I mentioned, there's kind of one big thing you need to look out for when you're looking for an NVMe enclosure and an NVMe drive. Now, currently there's kind of two main types of enclosures that you can get. 
there's ones on the cheap end like this, which are rated for speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. Now, the thing is some of the fastest NVMe drives on the market currently like this 990 Pro are rated for seven and a half thousand megabytes per second, which is crazy fast. And you might think seven and a half thousand megabytes per second, that must be the equivalent of seven and a half gigabits per second, right? Because a thousand megabytes is one gigabyte, but a gigabit per second and a gigabyte per second are actually two different measurements. And it's very confusing and it really threw me when I first looked into it because one gigabit per second is the equivalent of 125 megabytes per second. Now, if you're still with me, that means a 10 gigabit per second enclosure will get me transfer speeds of about a thousand megabytes per second, which is why this Uni Accessories enclosure, which is rated for 10 gigabits per second, gives me speeds of about 950 megabytes per second instead of what the drive is actually capable of, which is 7,500 megabytes per second. Now you can get pricier enclosures, which support up to 40 gigabits per second. And this will get you up to sort of like halfway of what this drive would be capable, for example. So it might get you three to 4,000 megabytes per second, which is way faster than anything you can get in terms of a consumer SSD drive. But if that was all too confusing, basically just make sure you remember the difference between gigabits per second and gigabytes per second or megabytes and megabits because they're two different measurements. So there's no need to get a NVMe drive that's rated for much faster than what your enclosure is actually capable of. So finally, will you really notice a big difference in speed jumping from an SSD to an NVMe drive? And I think this really comes down to what you're gonna use it for. If you're transferring huge files a lot, particularly from your actual computer drive to or from your actual computer drive, which is already gonna be really fast, then getting a drive like this will save you a lot of time because you can transfer big files so much faster. When it comes to editing, for me, I've started editing all my projects off this drive and it does feel a little bit faster. On my SSD, every now and then you get a slight little bit of lag, but it was barely noticeable. It wasn't a huge deal. Whereas on this, I don't notice that lag at all. So if you are editing really big projects with 4K or even like 8K footage, then an NVMe drive, I think would also make sense for you. Just because those huge files can be read and written so much faster. Either way, I've really been liking this enclosure if you're interested, check out the link in the description and let me know what do you edit off? Do you just edit off your computer hard drive or do you edit off a, an external hard drive like an NVMe drive or an SSD? But if you are looking to speed up your editing workflow, then check out this video here where I talk about more ways in which you can speed up your editing. Other than that, I hope you have an amazing day today and I'll see you very soon in the next video.